Are we having a party here? I don't know. Welcome to Polishing Profits. Join our three industry experts boasting 140 years of experience as they unlock building service contracting secrets that can revolutionize your business. Well, hello and welcome to Polishing Profits. We're happy to have you with us. Be sure to subscribe. We are everywhere you want us to be and every place that you need to hear us. And with that happy note, Sharon, I'm going to let you say uh, hello. Okay, thank you. Hello. <laughs> for that now, Ed, thank you. I want you to say hello, but you have a story from yesterday, our, our pre-roll stuff we were talking about that was kind of comedic in a uh, odd sort of way. So why don't you say hello and uh, tell us your experience yeah, real no, quick. So, so I, uh, yesterday I uh, made final arrangements and I left the uh, funeral parlor. And uh, I've never had a, a moment's problem. But uh, the car died. As soon as I rolled out of the parking lot, I was on the phone to AAA. So there's some kind so, of car, yeah, there is some kind of karma uh, involved there. So yeah, I would say karma does have humor. And just so our audience understand, Ed, Ed isn't sick. Ed isn't dying. We don't need another Paul McCartney moment. Or as Mark yeah. Twain said, the uh, rumors of my death have been greatly exaggerated. So yeah. it was just a funny moment. <laughs> well, with all that said, we're going to finish out this year with a great episode for you, things that everybody knows they should do and don't. So we've taken this, and what I'm talking about is a year-end planning checklist. We're going to come at this a little differently from a 40,000-foot view, the things that basically the three of us think you need to look at. You don't need to look at everything, but if you keep, keep it up and do some strategic thinking, that's what these points are around. It's the 40,000-foot view. And it's like colonoscopies or flossing program. You got to get the crud out, you know, yeah. that's what you have to do with your business. Get, yeah. We're a little wound up from our, like I said, our pre-roll conversation. Someday we'll get some of the best of or behind the scenes things going. But before I jump on this real fast, we're having a conversation and Ed brought up, everybody asked, what's the most difficult thing in your business that you're trying to solve right now? Now, Ed's answer was, if you don't know that, you're already in trouble. We continued to talk and we really found out our biggest problem is having enough runway and life left to do what we want to do in the time we have left to do it. So you probably may not find that too funny, but if you're our age, you'll probably get a kick out of that. So anyway, our, our five areas are going to be financial review, market analysis and customer feedback, operational efficiency. Let me get these notes up here where I can read them. Systems and process review marketing and branding strategy, and personal and professional development. And we're going to hit each one of these in about 18 to 20 minutes. And just to give you some things to think about. And show notes will be available after the, I think the last show we do, we'll put the show notes out on all these. So if you're interested, um, you can put something in the comment. You'd like to have those. And uh, we will take everybody's name and get them out for you. Yeah, it'll be a good uh, tool, good working yeah. document. And kind of a public service announcement, announcement starting in 2024, we are going to have show notes. We are going to have examples. We're going to go into a lot of supporting material for what we're talking about. If you want to join that particular portion of our group, you will have access to those sort of things. So that's some cool stuff that's coming in 2024. So with all that said, financial review. So let's start with our old friend, the profit and loss statement. And Sharon, since you do all the notes, I'm going to let you jump off with and loss and the uh, P&L. That's my all-time, historically, personal favorite of all the reports. The P&L is like my best friend. I lived by that thing. And sometimes when things were going not so well, I'd run that thing every day or every other day <laughs> just to see where I, it just gave me a sense of comfort. And then when things would kind of level out and be good, I'd back off to every week. And, you know, it just gave me a sense of security to see the numbers. But it also gave me a reality check on what's going wrong here. Why is this number standing out? I always ran my reports and I recommend to my clients that they run them with a percent to income. When I'm looking at a profit and loss statement for the first time from a company, I don't want to have to figure what all those percentages are because I live by the percentages. 
not necessarily the dollars. The percentages tell me everything I need to know about what's happening with the dollars. So the profit and loss statement is, in my opinion, your best friend. Some people think the cash flow manager is your best friend, but for me, it's the P&L statement. Now, when you ran that P&L statement, we're talking end of year planning. I mean, we all did them monthly yeah. and we all yeah. did them by account. One thing we used to do was we took the whole year and ran it for the entire company and yes. looked at it. And the same thing you're doing, we yes. looked at percentages that were askew or skewed, excuse me, not askew, skewed from what they should be. And then we would do any digging from there. But we looked at the whole company for the 12 month yes. period. Right, exactly. You really need to do that. And that that's the main the main goal. Ed, how did you, you same way when you were running your company? Uh, well, I had the thing that I was doing with the critical success factors. So there was stuff I was doing, some stuff weekly, some stuff monthly. And then I had four dates throughout the month that I would want to see everything in front of me. And I'm talking about everything, but I mean, all the important stuff, right. labor, accounts payable, accounts receivable. Uh, yeah. So now you perked my interest and I can't remember, we've had the discussion. What were those critical success factors that you were using as benchmarks and measures to keep? You know, it's the idea that in every business, there are three to five numbers that are critical, that are absolutely critical. Okay? Yeah. And then I had, <laughs> had somebody with a Harvard MBA tell me, he says, well, look, there are only three or five of everything. What specifically? So what not was, going but deep. But it was, yeah, it was labor. Okay. Um, yep. Accounts receivable, accounts payable. Uh, what got bid and what got signed. And you watch those, you're in good, same ones I watch. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. I mean, you know, you can go into, there's more detail it's possible, but I mean, give me the numbers, yeah. right? You know, you tell me the number, I'll tell you what's happening, you know? So. Yeah, that's oh, exactly right. And what is it? There's um, <laughs> all the people that study psychology and how we think. We can only hold five to seven pieces of information in our mind at one time. So you've got to get it down to the big rocks or the big chunks or whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. When you're looking, you can't be looking at a, at 50 or 60 things. You've got to have it down to the things that are the big rocks that make the difference. Is it, isn't that only for psych majors, though? Maybe. And you know the saying, if you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. Yeah. Yep. No, definitely. You don't know what's going on in your business. And I, I think we'll wrap up point one here real quickly. You should be looking at these numbers consistently. I mean, you should look at your whole organization and you should have a P&L for every account you have. Yes. yes uh, I was hoping we would mention that. Yes. And then you roll that into the whole company. And the other thing is to one of Ed's critical factors, and, and Sharon mentioned this too, and we all know this, I'm going to tell you something you already know, is labor. And that's got to be twice a month. You've got to look at those labor numbers when that payroll report comes out. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but uh, let me just say that, Mark, you got to know those labor numbers before they're due. Yes. Yeah. You, you don't wait till payday to figure it out. No, I'm it's talking on the macro. Yeah, yeah it's, we, it's too we late. We watched them in late. real time. We watched them in real time. <laughs> yeah. Supervisors watched them every day. So, but anyway, do a P&L for your whole year. Roll it all up and look at the thing and look how your entire company is doing. And, you know, if you're over on labor, then you've got to do a little digging. It gets to be a little, um, you know, if you wind up 60% of raw labor uh, is your cost, you're probably in trouble at that point without any load. So you want to go yeah. back and dig in that. But do look at your overall annual P&L for your entire company. Cash flow management. I'll talk last. That's always one of my favorites. Ed, you want to start with cash flow management? Real simple. Is that a yes or a no? <laughs> Real simple. It's D-R-O-O-C. Which is taught in the uh, master's program at uh, at Harvard University, and D R O O C is don't run out of cash. Yep, that's for real. That is for real. That was really. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, I think everybody sitting here is uh, unfortunately run out of cash. Yeah, more than once, unfortunately. One, one time or another. So Sharon Ed says, "Don't run out of cash." So the best way to do that is managing your looking at your. Uh, P and A R registers. You oh, want to talk boy. about those because you mentioned that's those. The other, that's the other Bible for yep. me. Watching that, and I can't tell you how many times I've reviewed them for a client, and I find we've got counts going into sixty, going into ninety, and 
lo and behold, we're still cleaning them. Somebody help me understand that when you haven't collected and, and there isn't a reason like it's a customer and they're paying at 45 days and they're running late. This is just normal run of the mill contracts and you don't get your money. It's like no ticky, no selly, you know, no money, no cleaning, you know, not cleaning. You know, it's, it's just got to monitor that and your, your payables as well, you know, receivables and payables. And it's not tough. It's what you have coming in is the AR and how yeah. much is in and how much is out and what you have to put out to maintain your accounts payable. And again, payroll's out of this picture. This is money coming in mm -hmm. and then money going out that we're using to operate the business. It's a different level, but that tells you what you have. Right. And then the, probably the, since it's uh, coming near Halloween here in the fall, the biggest horror story you can find is that you've only got $300,000 of cash and $500,000 of payroll. You don't want to be sitting there. Ask us how we know. <laughs> well, the thing is that if, 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 you, if you do it in advance, you can fix it. Yep. You know, what? I'll never forget. It was when I worked for first time I worked for a big company. What they said was, look, dump the trash Friday night, dump the trash, vacuum traffic areas, clean the bathrooms and then get the hell out of there an hour and a half early. So mm -hmm. you got 12 or 15 people for an hour and a half. If you if you yeah. do that consistently across your accounts, you should never run into that problem. Yeah. Right. Now, Sharon, you started down this trail a second ago. Good comment, Ed. You got to be looking at, I think we looked at cash flow every week. And then we had our statement of cash flows every month for the big one. You started down this trail, but let's pick it back up. What kind of uh, strategies should people consider? You know, we're looking at this thing at the end of the year. What can we do better next year? What kind of strategies would you say that uh, if they're not employing, they should be employing? Well, they, they have to monitor the reports. That's, that's the next one. But then mm -hmm. also when you, and, and if the owner, can't do it. You need a financial, you need someone in your office who's going to do it for you, but somebody has to do it. And monitoring those receivables, making you aware of the people who are delinquent in paying so you can do something about the service delivery. Either you schedule a meeting with that customer, you talk with their bookkeeping people, you find out what's going on that they're not paying you because you really cannot continue to clean when you're not getting paid. It's called a charitable organization when you work for nothing. And so since most people are not in business to be a charity, you have to get paid. If you don't get paid, you can't. So, but the key well, is having somebody monitor it. Yes. Well, there used to, and I forgot what it was, but there was a number that if everything that was 90 days and over, you only had a certain percent chance of collecting and i don't know if yeah. it was 50 percent or what but i mean it was astounding if you don't it see it in 90 days you know yeah. there's a good chance you're not gonna you know you're, you're not, not gonna, gonna see it at all so yeah i'm no. with you ed i can't remember you can google it, it was, yeah. you can google it the information's readily there but it's like after 90 percent, it's like you you run the risk of only getting 50 cent on the dollar days that risk jumps to 70 you get out past 120 days and I mean, you're taking pennies on the dollar, really. I mean, you're looking at 20 or 30 percent. And customers do play that game with you, folks. They mm -hmm. will extend you. They will stretch you. They will use your money. So make sure you have, I think, the, the closing word for this, not to go, go deep. You have someone watching the farm on yeah. your accounts payable and your accounts receivable. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the money to pay it, then you start lagging with your suppliers and your suppliers start cutting you off. Mm -hmm. or limiting your credit and how much they'll give you. This stuff is all interconnected and run in a healthy business. Well, listen, what, what what I'd love to hear, what I'd love to hear is what was it like before you figured this out? You remember before we had, I don't know about you, but I, I, I'm taking all the shit out of my garage and going over to the pawn shop to make payroll. So, yeah. Yes, I, I, I can remember even a couple of mistakes later on that uh, the customers had to pony up enough money because the line of credit was tapped and we were short because we let somebody extend. So we only had to do it once or twice. But yeah, it, this stuff is just critical. So what are your strategies to make sure, you know, payment terms, speeding up slow paying, slow paying accounts? People will not pay you any faster than you require. You've got it in your terms and conditions in your contract. Politely enforce it. And believe me, if you become the squeaky wheel, you'll get it fast. And there's yeah. a lot of strategies we can go to, but have a strategy yeah. for slow payers. Yeah, on, on, that, 
on that squeaky deal. What I always did on uh, a, a good sized accounts where the check would really make a difference. First day, box of Godiva chocolate to whoever's in charge of accounts payable. They remember your name. If you give them a box of Godiva, they remember your name. And you can pick yes. them up. You can pick up and get something done. They don't forget Godiva chocolates. Right. Doesn't happen. Yeah. And if, if you don't have the chocolates, just make sure you find out who's in charge of AP, how they want it done, when they want it done, and what their name is, and make sure they understand you. Well, listen, we don't care. If, you know, if it's cash in a white envelope, cool. Whatever it takes, man. Whatever it yeah. takes. <laughs> I had all- That's your life and death. That's life and death. I had people from the office go over to a client, happened to be a local county. It was a county account. And their payables people let us know when our check was ready at that time. And my person got in her car, went over there and picked it up. That's the day before a lot of digital deposits and online right. payments. I remember standing, waiting for the U.S. postal truck to come to bring us the mail. <laughs> what checks were in there? I mean, this is going back 30 years. But oh, yeah. Still, we had to have that money. And I'm chasing after the mailman. For that check to come in and think of payrolls in 72 hours. We've been down that, that road, all of us. I, I think my dad woke me up. He was a finance banker guy. Oh. And we got into this problem very early on, and he used to sit on our board. There was a couple guys that helped us out. And he always said, look, you're not a charitable organization. You're not a 501c3. You did the work. If they like the work, they'll pay you on time. But he said, you're not a bank. And he said, one thing people love is free money. And every day past the day that your check is due in your bank, that's free money for them. And he said, Mm -hmm. they will push you. Remind them you're not a charitable organization. Money's due when money's due. And if they can't, then you need to rewrite your contract and put in, look, if you're going to extend me all the time out, what they call a ghost 60, you know, they wait till the end of 30 and then they drag it out and take their 30 days. So you really wind up 60 days. I need cost of money. I'm a small company. So I'm going to have to charge you interest on that money if you want to borrow. And boy, that changes people's opinion, you know, in a hurry. That's got to be done correctly. There's a problem, though, if you're um, in the government sector. Yeah, I'm talking private sector. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's only so much you can do in, in, in the government. But they pay 90. The cost of money should be figured in your proposal somewhere. It doesn't have to be everything. Mm-hmm. But if you There's cost of money. So if you know a contract's going to be long 60 or 90 days in pay, you got to put the cost of not having access to that money. Because if you got to go to your line of credit or work, or or your own cash flow, That's money you don't have or money you've got to borrow, and that costs interest. So Mm -hmm. now we're kind of getting a little deep. Budgeting and forecasting, which rolls us back to uh, number one, the review and the P&L. Sharon, you want to jump down that uh, quickly Yeah, on on a year-end review for that? Yeah, but budgets are something really at this time of year people should begin working on. You want to begin in November or so so that you've got them done. The budget is a living document. And it is to be analyzed and reviewed throughout the year and changes made to it. As the trends in your business change, maybe you you really take off and you're skyrocketing and you planned a 25% increase and you're into the first quarter, second quarter, and you're running 30%, 40%. You want to look at that budget and change it where you need to and for expenses as well. So it, it's something. Every business has to do. It's just one of those year-end tasks, and you should get excited about it and about all the new things you're going to be doing to get the business. And I think part of the key here, you think, well, I know my budgets. I know this. Things slow down at year-end. I mean, when you start getting past Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And nobody's, well, nobody. Most people, and we all coach people for different areas, I don't have time to do these sort of things. You know, we're aggregately everything's fine you know overall company we're making we're we're making the percent but you may have a real somebody dragging you down this time of year is the time to give yourself some time to sit down talk with your team and go through this stuff because it's going to pay dividends in 2024 getting some of these things identified and straightened out and that's free money there's no sales cost there's no extra SG&A. There's nothing. You find this, you put it in, you make these corrections, and you go into 2020 pretty clean. I guess I shouldn't be using dates. That's a that's verboten when you're doing these things so they can run any year. Sorry about that. 
yeah, and that kind of takes us into tax planning. Ed, how did you approach tax planning? <laughs> I kind of know the answer to this, so it's can a loaded we, question. Can we play my theme song, Lawyers, Guns, and Money? <laughs> the blank has hit the fan. Well, there's Ed's suggestion. Sure. Well, listen, and overall, I got to tell you, one, one of the most important things I had was I had a top-notch tax attorney that I could run stuff by. And he was very, very expensive. I mean, most people would just say, gee, that's crazy. But I mean, listen, he was worth every single penny. And he was like at a central casting. He had like these Coke bottle glasses and he was all Adam's apple. And I mean, he was just, you know, he was perfect. <laughs> this is the guy. You could, you could look at him and know what he did. Know what he did? Yeah, Sharon, how about you on tax planning? I worked with the CPA and he kept me, he really handled everything for me. He audited the books every month and then he did a year on audit. But you have to get somebody professional to do this. An accountant of these preferable to handle your work. And you should have meetings with this tax planning person throughout the year so that you're sure what you're doing is going to mm -hmm. get you to where you want to be. Just like the P&L, you don't, and just like the cash flow, you don't want to wait till the last minute till December 30th, 31st, and start worrying about your tax, your taxes. Yeah, we did it throughout the, out the year, because if you're growing, your, oh darn it, your workers comp goes up, you know, those kind of liabilities go up and mm -hmm. you have to have, make sure that you're putting money aside for those things. And the, we used a CPA firm as well. Yeah. I mean, and my, you guys can jump on this if you want. If you're over $2 million a year and don't have a CPA firm, at least in your reviews once or twice a year, yeah, stop, don't pass, go to jail because you're going to lose a lot. When you start getting that kind of money rolling through, things do change. Right. And I, we, I, at least I highly suggest that, and you don't have, the CPA firm doesn't have to do anything. Ours happen to have all the bookkeeping <laughs> services. We used a combined service. So, you know, the general stuff was not as expensive as when the CPA jumped in. But, but we these, did. Are, these are not bookkeepers. There's, no. a difference between, there's a difference between a bookkeeper and a, a certified public accountant has a certificate that can be lifted from them. Yeah. Right. Okay. So there's some teeth with the CPA. Yeah, absolutely. Well, a CPA review, not necessarily a full audit, but a review will mm -hmm. stand up to a bank if you're going for credit will stand up to a potential buyer if you don't yeah. have those things in place it's just your word that the books are all right and that doesn't go very far with yeah. a buyer or a bank one time one time i got audited uh by the uh state unemployment people which i had never heard of uh, you know there's federal and sales tax and stuff like yeah. that but i never heard of that and when I called the CPA, when I called the accountant, I said, did I do something to trigger it? He says, no, uh -uh. this is just, you know, this is strictly by chance and it's not going to be too terrible. It's not like a sales tax one. It's not going to be too terrible. I figured that, I mean, th these idiots are going to be in my office for two weeks. They're going to be, you know, through every single file folder there is. And instead what happened, they showed up. And they said, well, can we see your financials? And I handed them the financials and they said, oh, these guys do your uh, accounting? And I said, yeah. He says, oh, geez. And they walked out. He says, we're, we're fine. We're good. Yeah. yeah. They, they knew them by reputation. Yeah. they The state agencies, the federal agencies, they won't ignore you, but they'll slow their roll on what they think they can collect if they see that you have your books professionally done and reviewed. Right. They don't get as aggressive. I thought you were going with the state unemployment tax in Washington. We used to call that a, we used to call that a shakedown. The state needs money, so they're going to come out and audit everybody. Sales yeah. tax, state unemployment tax. In our state, it was comp. And uh, I wasn't allowed in the office when they were there. We'll leave it at that. I never heard of it. I I'd never heard of anybody being audited uh, on uh... not for Suda. It's such a small no, amount yeah. of money. It's a, yeah, it's such a small amount of money. It's it's a fraction of a percent, crying out loud. So anyway, there's a whole bunch of information for you all to think about. But basically, do your planning. Don't wait till December 31st. Tax planning at the latest should start at the end of Q3 and the very beginning of Q4. If you want anything in place that will actually start working for you in Q1 of the following year. That's right. at least my thought. And last but not least, we have contingency planning. So Sharon, you want to 
run us through that as we wrap up our financial review year end? Yeah, this is a, a plan that you put into place, an idea about what you're going to do in case of an emergency, in case of a fire, a flood. It's their contingency plan for you to have some money set aside. We've just talked about not having enough cash to meet payroll. So you have to plan for this and you have to set this money aside and it could be a small amount, but it should be in a separate account that you can tap into should you need it for some kind of emergency or unforeseen situation. And this is outside something like a cap X where you're going to add a building or something like this is separate and above for actual emergencies that uh, could come up. Yeah. Like your biggest account canceling with no notice. Yeah. Or a hurricane coming through, which we've had and your business is closed for 10 days because you can't get to it. And so how do you, how do you manage that? You know, a disaster plan. Disaster plan. Okay. Yeah. Boy, this sounds nice. Have three to six months revenue set aside. Well, go on the lower end. Let's change that to one to three. We finally got smart after about 20 years and we had at least six. That was our basement, six months. Yeah. I mean, emergencies can have all kinds of things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, But I mean, you know, sometimes that's just a great big account. You land a great big account and like all this money leaving, you know, there's all this money it's costing to start it up and carry it till you get a check and all that stuff. Yes. And if you have a cash king. If you have the cash and can spend that, you don't have to borrow the money and pay interest on it. But it's somewhere, if you didn't plan on that interest expense to start the account up, and it's a large one, you've got to get that money back somehow. And then that's usually working. Now we're back into budgets and all the other things that we're talking about. Go ahead, Sharon. That's something that a lot of new owners don't think about, and that's startup costs of a new account and planning and budgeting for that and finding out who's going to source that money for you if you don't have it, the fact needs to jog in their brain that I am going to need X number of dollars before I even begin the account. And then I have to wait to get paid. So I'm paying payroll. There's your contingency money. Well, you're in that startup you- fee plus plus a minimum of 30 days labor with all yeah. of its associated loads. So yep. that could, you need to have contingency for that. That gets back to looking at your growth, which we'll be covering in another episode. So I think that wraps us up. Anything for uh, the good of the order you guys want to say about uh, financial review year end? Those are our five points. I think making the time and not saying I don't have time, but making the time to plan and analyze all the things we're going to be talking about and the the download that you'll be able to get, the handout, uh, that gives you a guide as what you need to look for in each one of these areas. You have to make the time to plan. Or you you plan to fail. You know, I think I'm going to give you the last word. I can't say that any better. Make the time. Do it and start the new year on a solid on a solid foot. Right. Yeah. Well, it doesn't have to be big, gigantic uh, project. This is not something that was going to take weeks and weeks and weeks to, to, to complete. Right. So yeah. no, I think when we go through all five of our areas, I would say you could do this with if you did it with your team. We did it with our team. We do this in a day day and a half we'd actually go take a retreat when we got larger day and a half and it was done but i think for a a small business owner they could work get this done in a half a day oh yeah they just touch the highlights they can do it in a few hours sure this isn't a deep dive thing this is the key things that you need to look at from that forty thousand foot view how are we doing This is a strategic review more than anything. I think with that, I'm going to say adios to everybody. Until we meet again, subscribe. Wasn't that a show, Ed? Happy happy trails. There it is. All right. Take care, everybody. We'll talk. Pass these along to your friends, acquaintances, and anybody else that has a listening ear for uh, good BSC direction and information. If you have any thoughts, want us to cover anything, let us know in the comments. Subscribe, subscribe. I guess you don't have the button unless you're going to YouTube. Yeah. I know the drill for that one. All right. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. All right.